Everyone would love to have at least one multi-bagger stock in their portfolio, right? This is a stock that gives you massive returns. And Amazon is by far the most discussed multi-bagger stock globally. In the past 25 years, Amazon has produced absolute returns of more than 150,000%. But there's another stock that has generated an absolute return of close to 70,000%. And that is Monster Beverage Corporation. If we pay close attention, the majority of the revenue and share price growth for Monster occurred after 2005 following the launch of the Monster Energy Drink in 2002. What happened after Monster debuted its energy drink? What were the various tactics that the company used to make it so successful? We'll answer these questions in this entire video. First, let's start by learning about the global beverage market. It's very interesting. There are only a few companies that actually have control over beverages across the world. For instance, if you talk about the soda beverage category, Coca-Cola and Pepsi form a duopoly there, which means that they control majority of the market share. In fact, they control almost 70% of the market in the US, which is the largest market. Now, let's look at the overall construction of the non-alcoholic beverage industry because the big one is alcoholic and then there's a non-alcoholic which has a market size of 1.2 trillion as of 2022. Now, the non-alcoholic beverage market is primarily divided into two segments, which is the soda-based segment, which we saw earlier, and the alternative beverages segment. The alternative beverage segment combines anything basically that's not soda-based. So this includes things like ready-to-drink iced teas, lemonades, fruit beverages, dairy products, coffee drinks, energy drinks, sports drinks, all of these things come under the alternative category, which is non-soda-based. Now, amongst all of these alternative drinks, energy drinks, sparkling drinks, water, and juices, these control 80% of the market. This entire segment is almost a 600 to 700 billion global opportunity. And energy drinks represent about 16, 17% of this entire opportunity. And this is the segment in which Monster Beverage operates, which is a massive, massive segment across the world. While most of us are familiar with Monster as an energy drinks company, you probably did not know that Monster Beverage Corporation actually did not start with the energy drink as its first product. In fact, the company was founded under a completely different name. Monster Beverages was formerly known as Hansen's and it was founded in 1935 in Southern California by uh, a gentleman named Hubert Hansen. The Hansen family focused on selling pasteurized juices mm -hmm. primarily in, in LA in California and the brand then eventually became nationally recognized by the 1970s and the Hansen family expanded their business to offer branded sodas as well. So they entered the soda segment. In 1997, Hansen's launched its first functional drinks line and marketed it to provide an immediate energy boost to whoever drinks it. Hansen's functional drinks were very, very successful. So that's what it was called, functional drinks. And this newly introduced line contributed to 25% of Hansen's revenue within the first year of its launch. What also happened around the same time in 1997 was that Red Bull made its debut in the US market. By 2000, Red Bull had a massive 75% share in the energy drinks market. Then in 2001, another company by the name of Rockstar launched its line of energy drinks. The popularity of energy drinks skyrocketed. Within two years, more than 20 companies were vying for the remaining market, which is 25% of the market that Red Bull did not control. Red Bull became the undisputed leader in the energy drinks market and the market share that Hansen had got through their functional drinks line dropped to about 5%. Now they had to do something quickly if they wanted to maintain relevancy in this energy drinks market. And in 2003, the company released Monster, its first ever energy drink. In the first year, Monster sold more than 10 million cans. And by the end of the decade, Monster Energy contributed more than 80% to the Hansen's company revenue. Following its success, the company decided to change and rebrand itself and change its name to Monster Beverage Corporation in 2012. And since then, the company has established itself as a major player in the energy drinks market. Let's look at what Monster did differently from all of these other energy drinks companies and deep dive into it. What they primarily did differently is three core things. The first is brand image. So they focused on their brand image and creating a different brand identity versus all the other energy drinks. At the time when Monster Energy Drink was launched, 
Red Bull was already an established brand and it was impossible to just play by what Red Bull had done and copy that. If we look at Red Bull's approach, we can see that it doesn't market the drink itself, the energy drink itself. Rather, it markets what happens to you after you drink it. This you can see by their tagline, right, which a lot of you might know, Red Bull gives you wings. To strengthen this narrative, Red Bull works to associate itself with athletes. Its marketing message is that Red Bull helps fuel these amazing athletes and helps them accomplish these incredible feats. Red Bull sponsors athletes and then leverages their accomplishments via their entire marketing campaigns. The underlying message from the Red Bull marketing team is that these athletes can accomplish great things because they drink Red Bull. That's what they want you to associate in, their, in your mind. Monster Beverages, on the other hand, took a slightly different approach. What they wanted to do is they wanted to position itself as a lifestyle brand. And to achieve this, Monster Beverages not only sponsors events, teams and athletes, but the brand also has a major presence at all of these things that it sponsors. The brand goes out of its way to connect directly with its fans. And one example is how it does this at different NASCAR events in the US. The company's ex-VP of marketing says that Monster is very mindful of its marketing activities and doesn't depend only on pushing the product to its customers. They essentially spend their resources reaching out to customers and creating and converting them into loyal fans and that generates pull demand from the market instead. Monster employs extensive sponsorship and marketing campaigns throughout the sports and entertainment industries to develop its brand image. Certain sports are now almost synonymous with the Monster name and logo. A couple of examples are NASCAR and UFC. Alright, so the second thing that Monster worked on, which was different to the others, is distribution. Distribution is very important for the FMCG industry because you have to distribute the end product to the customer. Without efficient distribution, it is impossible to satisfy the demand that you might have in the market. And Monster was well aware of this fact. Initially, the company used its Juice Portfolios network to create and expand its reach. Now this helped the company establish credibility and thus help launch more products. What they did was also partnered with a monorail companies to make Monster available at various stations, right? So they tried a bunch of different things to distribute their product. And this helped Monster to gain a market share of about 30% between 2002 and 2012. But the company got a major boost when it partnered with Coca-Cola for its distribution. Its market share jumped by 10% almost by this decision. In 2015, Monster Beverages and Coca-Cola made a deal in which Coke transferred their energy drinks portfolio to Monster and bought a 17% stake in the company. This proved to be very beneficial for Monster Beverages. Between 2008 and 2013, the growth in case sales was 12% year over year for Monster. But post the partnership, the case sales growth jumped to 16% year over year. Partnering with Coca-Cola gave them massive distribution and it was quite the masterstroke from the company. The final reason behind Monster's success lies in their efficient manufacturing management. Now Monster does not manufacture any of their drinks. Rather, they outsource it completely to third parties. They purchase the raw materials and supplies and give them directly to third party manufacturers. These manufacturers then produce the final product, which is the Monster Energy Drink. In fact, the company does not even manufacture the concentrates, the raw material that is needed to make these drinks. Its role primarily is branding. It procures the concentrates from suppliers and sends them to a third party for manufacturing the final product. But how does this outsourcing help? And is it even different from what other players are doing? The answer is no. All players, including Red Bull, outsource the manufacturing to other vendors. But Monster does something very unique where it leverages this outsourcing by launching products very, very quickly. Outsourcing allows the company to quickly introduce new product lines with different packaging attributes and allows the company to outsource packaging and bottling to areas near the distribution points, reducing the shipping costs for the company. Monster launched 80 plus new varieties of drinks between 2019 and 2021. Red Bull, on the other hand, launched less than 10 varieties during the same period. Monster Beverages doesn't think about the competition the way that other drink brands do. The company is willing to incur the costs and efforts it takes to develop new drink lines that appeal to each different type of consumer within the beverage category. For example, 
Monster saw that there was a large demand for Starbucks bottled frappuccino beverages. Now, instead of waiting for a competitor to come in and take that market, the company introduced its new Java Monster line, which competes with bottled coffee drinks. Even though the company's core competency was not coffee, it did not stop Monster from stepping outside of its core area to create something new in the beverage industry. But Monster is not done yet. What they are now doing is they are diversifying into other segments and geographies and there is a rationale behind this decision to diversify. Recently, there have been some reports of the ill effects of energy drinks on human health. However, to mitigate any future effect on Monster's business, there is a need for the company to diversify. So recently, Monster acquired this company called Canarchy. The Canarchy acquisition marks Monster Beverage Corporation's entry into the massive alcoholic beverage industry with a number of high quality established brands. This acquisition is likely to increase sales by about 3-5% to in 2022 itself. Seeing Monster's growth today, you would have never realized that it was Red Bull who had once threatened Monster's existence in the 90s. Now the tables have turned. Monster is seeing explosive growth and is diversifying internationally by launching products like the Predator line in price sensitive markets. Growth rates for Red Bull in emerging markets have been quite impressive and that has given Monster hope that it can mimic that to create its own massive growth engine. Low cost energy brand in Monster's portfolio will be a key to obtaining a market share in these emerging markets and developing economies worldwide. So all in all, we cannot deny the fact that Monster Beverages is a formidable force in the energy drinks market today. A company that once had less than 5% of the market now stands neck to neck with Red Bull with almost 40% market share compared to Red Bull's 42%. It's just not the energy drinks market. It is also now diversifying into other segments of the beverage industry. That's all we had for you today. In our channel, we cover various aspects of businesses, fascinating aspects of different businesses. And if you like this video, you will definitely like our Costco business model video. Do check that out. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Vested for more content like this.